Hello and welcome to the next video in, in my series on the design and construction of this um, parlor guitar. In one of the previous videos you would have seen how I bent the sides, sides. and this is really what happens after those sides are bent. Um, you can see that the, 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 the whole structure which I like to call the rim of the instrument is in the internal the external mould um, and at this stage I can take the sides out I'm only using the mould to hold, hold everything in shape whilst the various other components are stuck to the side so let's just take that out and I can talk about this in a little bit more detail well the first thing to be glued into, pl into place are these two end blocks. So let's have a look at those. This one, this is a block of mahogany and it's into this block that I'll cut the dovetail which will take the neck. Um, and when you, look, when you look at this block, the, the grain is running in this direction. It's, it's, it's quite tricky to place this block so that um, you're not gluing onto end grain. So the grain's running in this direction, which means we've got um, side grain to glue the top and the back in place, and side grain where the, the sides are. Um, the exposed end grain has been sealed with some um, sanding sealer, and that's to stop any that's to stop moisture drying out of the end block, or or, or indeed the opposite for the end block absorbing more moisture. So that's, that, that's the, where the neck's going to go. At the other end, um, I use a piece of plywood. Now, I always use a piece of plywood at this end um, simply because I don't know what's going to happen to this guitar in the future. If somebody wants to put um, a pickup inside it um, and drill um, a 12 millimeter hole through the end here for the, for the, the, the jack socket, if that's a piece of solid wood, you run the risk of, of, of breaking it, of it cracking where the hole is. So I like to use a piece of plywood, just in case really. And one of the other reasons is that um, it, it, will, it won't split if there's any impact at the bottom of the guitar. Often if you see guitars which have been damaged um, on airlines, <coughs> it's normally where the case has been dropped and the, the instrument takes an impact at the end. So really that piece of plywood is just in case. Um, one of the other features that you'll notice um, with, with my instruments is that on the inside I glue these little um, braces in place. Now the reason for that is that if the, if the guitar again takes a knock on the outside, because the whole of the box is under tension, um, there's a chance of, it, of a, a, any crack um, travelling around the outside of the guitar. So what I do is, I, is on, the, on the extremities, on the lower bout and on the upper bout, I glue on these pieces, in this case they're off cuts of the soundboard, pieces of, of cedar, going across the grain and that's to stop any crack going around the outside of the guitar from any future um, impact. The last component to, to go into the construction of the rim um, are the linings. Now, traditionally on steel string instruments, um, luthiers tend to use curved linings. The idea of the lining is to increase the surface area of glue joint between the top or the back and the sides. Um, when you glue the binding, when you when you glue the um, the bindings and the purflings on, the, the 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 side is actually cut away. So the only thing holding the top or the back to the, to the sides is the linings. Um, and on the front you need about five, six millimetres um, wide lining. So traditionally, curved lining is used. And this is a piece of curved lining here. So you've got a piece of um, five, six millimetre um, cedar in this case, with saw cuts at about every eight millimetres. And the idea is that this makes it flexible enough to go around the inside of the instrument. However, what I've been doing on some of my more recent instruments is using solid linings. Now, you can't bend 
a piece of six millimeter um, wood to that kind of shape. So, so what I do is I build this up in a couple of layers. So I start off with some, um, so, some, some cedar, which is about two and a half, three millimeters thick. And I, I bend two pieces for each lining. You may well just be able to see a glue join here. And the reason that I do that is that it gives this incredibly rigid rim. Um, if, you try, if you flex the sides with curved linings, there'll be some give in it. But this is incredibly rigid, and I think that that helps to enhance the sustain of the instrument. The soundboard's vibrating, and because the rim of the instrument is rigid, it can't absorb some of that energy from the soundboard. And indeed, some classical makers go, go so far as to use um, double thickness sides to achieve the, the, the same aim. Tend to think that that's overkill, really. Um, so, say so double solid linings um, is, a, is the method that I'm currently using on, on many of my instruments, not all of them, but, but um, on, on many of them. Now, once the linings have been glued in and they've been shaped, the the surface of the rim, which is going to be glued to the soundboard, is, is sanded so that it's completely flat. And you can see it sits nicely on, the, on this flat table. The back surface is sanded to, to, to take the back which is curved. I'll speak to you a little bit about the back in, in the next video. But all of this is curved, and indeed if I turn it over, you can see how it pivots where the waist is and the idea is that when I curve the back of the instrument I want the, 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 the maximum um, curve to be at the waist. So that's, that's the rim of the instrument completed. Um, the next stage is for me to finish off work on the back and on the, um, on the soundboard and then once, once that's done front and back glued onto the sides to form um, the, 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 the box, the magic box which makes this wonderful sound. So thank you very much for watching this video and um, I look forward to, to your company in the next one. Bye bye.